Well, thank you very much. I'm very happy to have been invited here uh, to this conference. Uh, uh, I remember that um, uh, at the, during the uh, sort of financial crisis at the beginning, you know, I, uh, there was a joint uh, project uh, by, um, by Bruegel, uh, a think tank in Europe, and uh, the Peterson Institute for International Economics, and we uh, put together some essays on uh, uh, transatlantic uh, crisis management. Uh, and uh, I remember that uh, the American uh, uh, contribution to the title of this book was to, to put uh, an ocean apart, uh, to, which, mark. Uh, to which <laughs> we managed to add a, a, a question mark <laughs> <laughs> as a European contribution. <laughs> now, because at that time, I think uh, the, the mood uh, about uh, uh, transatlantic cooperation was quite different. Uh, I, I remember uh, <coughs> Robert Kagan wrote uh, that uh, we, you know, Europe and the United States, we did not belong even to the same planet and that uh, we would never understand each other on, on anything. And uh, so uh, happily this is, uh, this is changed and uh, I'm very glad that uh, uh, I understand uh, some quiet uh, uh, and perhaps uh, uh, b becoming not so quiet uh, shortly diplomacy is, is going on to, to revive uh, the, uh, the uh, transatlantic discussion on trade. I think um, I don't have to uh, give many figures. I think uh, both in the paper that was prepared uh, as an introduction by, by um, Alcaro and Alessandri, there were a number of uh, important data and also the minister himself uh, has uh, provided a strong oh. indication. I think, uh, you know, frankly, I believe that the case for a transatlantic uh, uh, trade, uh, free trade area is, uh, is probably uh, uh, stronger now than it ever was. Um, I think the reasons are, are that, uh, uh, you know, the world is uh, still uh, fighting with, uh, with a prolonged uh, recession and, uh, you know, uh, liberalization of trade uh, could uh, certainly provide a boost to, to the economy. And I think uh, there is uh, uh, perhaps uh, the, uh, the European crisis has uh, uh, drawn attention by uh, all uh, our uh, friends uh, uh, across the Atlantic and, uh, and elsewhere on the, uh, on the urgency perhaps to, to revive stronger form of cooperation. And I think uh, this time uh, could be different from other episodes of, in which uh, transatlantic cooperation in the past has been attempted without uh, achieving much, uh, much success. So I will probably uh, mm, only ask uh, a few questions to introduce uh, the, um, the panel discussion. Uh, I think uh, the first question would be, the, uh, can we really expect uh, 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 large benefits from a free trade uh, uh, area, transatlantic free trade area, because you know the the trade uh, and investment between the two areas is still is already quite uh, quite deep, you know. And uh, so I'm aware of the of the studies that have uh, uh, been quoted. Uh, and uh, but uh, the the key issue would be not to concentrate on trade alone, but also to, di to direct investment. Uh, and, and uh, on the services uh, area, because this is where I think uh, greater benefit could be, uh, could be, um, could be achieved. Uh, uh, is the European Union, another question, is going to, to, to benefit from a zero tariff agreement? Again, my own answer would be, would be yes, but it depends on certain, on certain sectors, because in certain areas, I think uh, the present tariffs uh, are, are higher in, in Europe than in the United States and, and vice versa. So there would be a, a, a clear uh, difference, but uh, certainly a, a combined uh, positive case can be, can be, uh, can be uh, made. Um, then I think uh, uh, if one thinks uh, what are the key obstacles to the process in this area, is that uh, you know, we need to look not only to tariff barriers, but also to non tariff measures, and there is a host of these which obviously have to be addressed uh, that uh, go quite beyond, uh, um, you know, the, the sort of the typical uh, barriers uh, at, at the border. You know, these are 
barriers that come to, uh, from regulatory differences uh, among countries and uh, uh, safety, health standards, environmental protection, data treatment, privacy protection, industrial patents, and so forth. So there is, a, there is indeed a, a very broad area of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, in which uh, there is a need to work. Then another key question is, is whether a, a free trade, a transatlantic free trade area would, uh, would be uh, uh, sort of damaging the multilateral trade system or not. Again, my own answer is that, uh, is that that is not uh, the case um, because uh, certainly the, the, uh, we believe that the, the trade creation impact of this uh, uh, big uh, transatlantic area would be, would be bigger than the trade uh, diversion uh, impact. And so the, um, the, uh, the, the net impact would still be positive, and, uh, but it is essential that this uh, trade agreement is open to, uh, to, to all countries and certainly uh, uh, the indication that uh, the uh, agreement should be open to Latin American countries, to African countries is certainly a, 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 crucial, a crucial aspect here. Um, so everything seems, seems to be uh, uh, fine. Well, uh, I must say that uh, you know, the, there are key obstacles and uh, the trade uh, negotiations are always uh, um, moving very slowly, uh, and uh, this is, uh, even if we start uh, uh, discussing this in earnest uh, at an early stage, uh, it is not realistic to imagine that you would have uh, an immediate uh, impact uh, on, uh, on, uh, on uh, actual uh, trade flows uh, or, and measures uh, to, that could uh, revive growth. So, I think uh, you know the title of this session is betting on trade. Yes, uh, certainly let's bet on trade, but uh, let's not forget uh, the macroeconomic setting. And the macroeconomic setting, you know, I'm a macroeconomist myself, uh, uh, is uh, is is very important because, as I said, we're still in uh, in a situation of economic recession, and uh, we see, unfortunately, that the risk for uh, uh, policies uh, that uh, are not really f f favoring, uh, favorable to the opening of trade and uh, liberalization are indeed uh, uh, taking strength. Uh, I think uh, both in the United States uh, and, uh, and Japan uh, <coughs> there are uh, uh, risks that um, you know, required the policy adjustments in the fiscal area, in the public debt uh, management area will be delayed for short-term reasons and uh, that uh, instead uh, there would be um, a tendency to uh, follow policies that uh, lead to a depreciation of, uh, of, uh, of the exchange rate, you know. And, uh, and of course, you know, I mean, Europe is erring, if anything, on the other side. Certainly we are taking fiscal consolidation and budget deficit very seriously. Uh, and we don't target uh, the exchange rate. So there, there is a risk that uh, Europe becomes the Eurozone and the Euro become an area of um, what uh, one may call uh, the appreciating uh, currency of last resort. You know, everybody wants to devalue the, uh, compared to what, uh, and, and the Euro is the only, is the only uh, currency that doesn't seem to mind very much uh, about, uh, about the exchange rate. But of course, uh, there, are, there are limits to that. So uh, I think uh, the, <coughs> the need for uh, fiscal readjustment in, um, in the United States and Japan is important, and uh, it, that doesn't mean that uh, it would uh, have uh, an immediate uh, negative impact on the, on the world economy because it can be uh, sort of phased appropriately and structured in such a way as to, as to minimize the short-term impact, but at the same time, the longer the action is delayed, you know, the more skeptical markets will become and, uh, and the, the, the stronger would be the corrective measures that will be required uh, uh, later on. Um, also, I think from uh, <coughs> a macroeconomic point of view, uh, there is a, we are still in a period of a very, uh, very uh, strong monetary expansion all over, all over the world uh, and um, eventually this monetary expansion 
will have will have to be uh, will have to be uh, reabsorbed. That uh, certainly might create problems. But uh, uh, the, the danger is that uh, in this period of uh, monetary uh, relaxation, there will be uh, less urge uh, urgency to uh, uh, address uh, structural problems, uh, and uh, and again uh, the risk of uh, of uh, uh, relying on. Uh, on, uh, on uh, excessive liquidity uh, to uh, to uh, to postpone uh, to postpone adjustment uh, and uh, and, uh, and and corrective measures, and again from a, a global point of view, this uh, mm, a tendency which is mostly uh, taking place in the industrialized countries uh, again uh, gives sources to concern in the main em emerging areas. You know where the you know this. Uh, monetary policy easing are considered to be uh, in a sort of a, a putting an undue pressure on the exchange rates uh, of countries, um, particularly in Latin America, but also, but also uh, in Asia. And so there is then a tendency to uh, embark on, uh, on re restrictive policies, uh, I mean, uh, capital restrictions, uh, which uh, uh, normally uh, are, are also a form of uh, uh, protectionism, not uh, on the trade area, but uh, uh, on, on closely related areas. So I think um, the, uh, the danger that you know, we uh, uh, willingly or <laughs> unwillingly uh, sort of slide into, into this uh, uh, psychology of currency wars uh, uh, needs to be addressed very clo uh, closely and uh, with urgency because, you know, while the trade negotiation to liberalize and opening up uh, uh, may take some time, you know, uh, the, the trade uh, wars or the currency wars uh, may, may, start, may start to have an, an impact much sooner. So, again, there is a need uh, within the, this uh, idea of a Euro-American uh, effort uh, Perhaps uh, trade uh, is an important item, but uh, I think uh, uh, monetary and financial relationships, uh, particularly within the G7 and the G20, uh, needs to be uh, taken more seriously. I mean, so far, uh, the efforts uh, for, of the G20 to um, bring about uh, a consistent uh, set of macroeconomic policies that would uh, help reduce in world uh, payments imbalances and therefore restore a better climate for trade liberalization and, uh, and, uh, and uh, opening up of commerce uh, uh, is, 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 is in danger. You know? So I think um, uh, there is a, a strong need for, uh, for uh, uh, this uh, in, in revived uh, uh, partnership uh, uh, of Euro-Atlantic Euro uh, uh, nature to, uh, to take the initiative within the existing forums not only of, of trade uh, negotiation, but also of policy cooperation. I think uh, that's uh, more than enough uh, to keep the discussion going, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sakamani. Thank you very much for setting the tone. Um, 